entering the diva dimension, where reality is a relative term. The realm we occupy is only a minute portion of the infinite spaces that hold mysteries of the past, present, and future. The sheer vastness of our universe can be overwhelming. Danielle offers her hand as a guide into what we call the unknown. Travel with her as she endeavors to untangle the threads of not only our dimension, but of those beyond. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is a special Divas Dimension edition. We are entering another dimension tonight. It is Shemaine, it is Halloween. It is time to enter and go through the magic doors. I'm quite excited uh, to prepare this special episode with you. Uh, I am in a mood for Halloween. I'm all dressed up and uh, ready. I have a couple costumes, I choose this one. Uh, for the uh, show tonight. Behind me, I have my little uh, sparkling skeletons and, and skulls and ants. And of course, I never miss my George the Gargoyle. It is a special evening tonight, uh, ladies and gentlemen. It is the time when actually we all think about the dead souls. It's time for us to share really what is the Halloween. So let's start. First of all, tonight at midnight, the doors are open. The souls are coming from the other side, visiting us. This is not just a horror story or Hollywood written by, you know, some of these producers to give you fun. This is a story that is given to me by my great ancestors, by your great ancestors, by all of us that were pagans a long time ago. What happened at that time, basically, we were all celebrating the life and the death. We were also celebrating the beginning of the new season. That was Shemaine. Shemaine was marked end of the harvest season and beginning of souls of the dead. Now, when we th think about those offerings, every culture is different. Where I come from, it's very common uh, to leave the apples, just like you see in a little red riding hood or in a sleeping beauty, because the apples are presenting the life, love, and people do live tobacco so they will actually leave the cigarettes if that person did smoke uh you know beside the graveyards another thing that they would also leave it would be alcohol and many people were like why alcohol not to drink but to say to actually have a drink for their uh, uh dead souls that's very common also if you go uh deeper inside of the latin america if you go inside of the mexico if you go uh, uh further on uh like colombia venezuela Argentina and etc. So, like you can see, our end of the harvest season, beginning of the winter, and offerings was given to the souls of the dead. But later to the time we got to the jack the lanterns. So, just like the one that I have on this side here behind me, and a lot of times you go like, oh, they're so frightened, but they can be so beautiful with many people that are really artistic, that they know how to carve them, give different faces from Disneyland, cartoons, or even from the scary stories. Modern Halloween comes from the Gothic uh, stories that are coming from the horror stories or my great, great uh, uncle, uh, Count Dracula. Um, when you think about Count Dracula, many of you think about him. Uh, uh, when the Halloween comes, that he's coming, hunting uh, the souls of the uh, beautiful woman, chasing the people around, or searching, you know, for the victims and the souls. I'm going to give you, actually, the story that is quite opposite. Uh, the castle right now is under the private contractors that I'm trying to get in contact with, and I'm, when I go to visit, we're going to talk about and discuss all about that. Uh, the 
put what is, uh, you know, they make these spectacular shows about Count Dracula and they have these kind of, we can say almost like a sleepovers and parties where people get dressed up and have fun. What I do understand because money needs to be made to take a lot of uh, uh, money to be taken care of. And there's still parts of the castles that need to be renewed. And I hope uh, when my book comes out, we're going to work on that. Um, to drive travelers and tourists come from and around the world to spend. Starting from Saturday, October, forgive me, from October 29, what will connect uh, with dead souls inside of the Transylvanian castle. Many did hear the sounds, many did hear the voices, the screams. And I'm going to tell you where they're coming from. Those screams and the sounds are not coming actually from the souls that are haunted or from the souls that are being dead. Most of the times you can hear the cries of his beautiful wife, Justina, who actually did fell down by being pushed by the Turks, uh, hundreds and hundreds of meters going inside of the cold river during the time as the Turks were taking over Transylvania and Count Dracula or Vlad Dracul Castle. Um, they could hear her. She's calling him, she's loving him so much uh, that during the Halloween, when they mentioned and the doors are open, you could hear her weeping and going to the hallway, especially around the library and around the master's bedrooms. Another story that it's coming from, and most of the people that are sharing with me, it's actually that they can hear and see Count Dracula himself. Think about that. What would you do if you see him? Would you say hello? Would you get scared or would you listen? I would listen because I know his soul is very hard, closed inside of those uh, heavy walls, thinking about the one and only uh, Justina. Oh, that break of love is powerful that after so many years, still they have Count Dracula being connected to his uh, uh, wife that did pass away and went to the other side without him uh, saying goodbye or saying goodbye to him on that horrible uh, winter night. You know, by locals and myself, I do have a huge respect when it's coming to this uh, special night and night that is connected uh, to my great ancestor. There is even a, a, a special powers and the prayers that are uh, done around the castle. Uh, basically, uh, during the time, many gypsies that I do come from Transylvania do gather around the uh, castle and they do the special prayers, uh, asking the dead souls to return where they need to go back uh, to the other side. Um, you know, some did see shadows, and I do believe that they did see shadows. Um, and you can hear, like I'm saying, the voices and the screams. And a lot of times gypsies are reporting that you can hear him begging for his Justina to come back. He is angry. That's true. And he is betrayed and feeling alone. Um, but as his uh, blood runs through me, I give my word that I will change the history and give totally a different story about Count Dracul. And that's why I also did choose uh, this topic to share with you at uh, this special night, because the castle is really magical during uh, this time. The castle opens itself. Uh, the mansions are open, and you guys will probably see and feel that even around your own homes. Uh, many people get really sometimes scared, thinking, okay, is it possible that some dead souls will be trapped and that's possible too, but that's what you need to do during this time. You need to tell them to go back where they belong to. Another thing some people are saying, why are we getting dressed up during the Halloween? Well, uh, during the ancient time, before we turned to Christianity and other uh, organized religions, we were pagans. At that time, people would get dressed up in different kind of costumes. And those costumes would take months sometimes to prepare in advance. It depends what kind of material they were used. 
Uh, most of the time, a lot of times you need something red. So that's why I'm wearing red. And it's presenting the blood of innocent victims and the souls that went to the other side. And dark, of course, it's for uh, uh, for the dead and the other side. And you need something sparkly, what it means to reflect your own souls and your own uh, power away from uh, um, these things. Uh, 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 you know, after that, of course, because you're inspired by gothics, by stories, by Hollywood and many other things, people started making these glamorizing costumes and having fun and enjoyment. What's also uh, true, you should do that if you want to have some fun and enjoy the life, because life is also about enjoyment. And as much as we think about, you know, what is happening on Halloween, by the old world, uh, Hallow's Eve, all Saints Day and All Souls Day, it's Western Christianity honoring all the saints and prayers for the dead souls. So again, that's when most of the ladies will come to the church and I'll show you, and they will be uh, covered up. So as they pray, and then they would lift the veil. And this was also a presenting of the revealing your face uh, to the gods, to the church, just like you had a bride presenting herself for the first time going into the bridge dome. Uh, you know, by end of the uh, 12th century, Western church did involve the church bells, baking and sharing the soul cake. Um, and this goes even deeper, uh, like we are saying that today's uh, costumes are inspired by uh, Celtic uh, countries that they have deeper pagan roots. And just like you see uh, what I am wearing today. Um, also, if we talk about many things that do happen on Halloween and some of the most darkest uh, moments in Halloween, uh, people think immediately that, you know, dead souls will come and hunt you. Many of the producers and people go then trying to hunt the dead souls during this time. But I personally think it's very wrong because during this time we need to honor the dead souls. We don't need to provocate them. So if you're really in a spirit of Halloween, as much as I am, you also show love and the respect. So I do have Jack the Lantern in front of my house. I do have my house decorated. I will give the candies to the children for the uh, dead souls. And of course, I will leave the tobacco and uh, the alcohol, so some kind of liquor uh, for, for the dead souls at the graveyard. It doesn't mean that I've forgotten my roots. It actually means that I honor them and respect them. Uh, um, another thing that I want you really to be careful, please, please, I'm going to share one very important story. I'm not going to give the name uh, because the person will be capable of recognizing themselves. I can just say that they're living really close uh, to me. And uh, it was a time for Halloween. It was time today. And um, this gentleman, together with his uh, son and a daughter and a wife, uh, they're a little bit younger uh, than myself. Uh, actually, they did celebrate. So we can say so-called celebrate a Halloween. And then on the evening, uh, his son decided to go and break uh, some of the jack lanterns or the pumpkins with his feet. So basically doing some vandalizing. As much as this was a very um, traditional family, uh, we can say very uh, family that is raised in a different culture, uh, not, not, not coming from my culture, but very uh, traditional culture. Two days after that, uh, his father came to me and he was saying, you know what, this is what happened. Um, you know, a couple of the neighbors saw it, that he did it. And uh, he did even to the pumpkin in front of his own house. I look at him and I turn around. I said, I'm so sorry. But this year will not start very good for you. And he said to me, what do you mean by that? I said, Mr. So-and-so, uh, you broke the rules. You vandalize Jack the Lantern's pumpkins. That means you're making fun of the dead souls. And I said, I'm truly sorry. You should ask and pray for forgiveness. A couple days after that, less than a week, I should say, as I was parking my car, a uh, son approached me and he said, my father is in a hospital. And I said, oh my God, what happened? He fell down on the ice and totally broke his uh, right arm that all of his wrist 
the bones and the joints inside of his hand were broken and the shoulder and he needed three to four surgeries. I look at him and I said, you did this. And he said, how come? I said, I talked to your father and I said, you shouldn't do this. Showing disrespect to dead souls, especially during the time of the transitions, when the veil is thinner and the dimensions are open, you're actually involving yourself into the darkness and you may be punished for it. Uh, he apologized after that, went to the prayer at the temple and asked for forgiveness. But this is what happens, ladies and gentlemen, when you actually play with the powers above and under. So that's what I'm telling you. Please, as you're doing Jack the Lanterns, show some respect. And when it's time for them, you know, to dispose them, please leave them in your backyard, you know, and or, you know, put them into compost. Or some people like to make the pumpkin uh, cakes and pies or give them to the animals on the farm. But just please don't kick them and toss them around because it won't bring you any luck and any happiness to your family or to your household. So that's very important to know. And that has been running through my family since the ancient time, even before I uh, came to Canada. So we were always connected to uh, respecting uh, the pumpkin special the pumpkin that is carved you know um another thing that many of you uh did ask me and uh, i did love that in a question saying how come these souls are coming during the whale thinning so during the whale thinning basically passing from one dimension to another dimension is much easier so basically it's very easy for these souls to go back and forth and being trapped it's beautiful also in one way if you see that we are not alone, we've never been alone, and that our loved ones can come to see us, of course, and we will meet them again when again is the time. And then, you know, another thing that many of you did ask me, it was, I would love to know what is happening well in Hoyabachi forest uh, Romania around the castle uh, forests in the world um, uh, this myself because they said uh, that a forest itself it's a huge basically dimension pathway or, you know, dimension door. Uh, you know, there is many different creature there. Uh, also, there is UFO sightings that, you know, many tourist photographers, even the, you know, special photographers for National Geography did capture. And after they did capture, they released that. The people that passed through the forest uh, did report something that is very common when you have the missing time. That's they don't know where they've been and what happened. After that, many did experience nausea, restlessness, and anxiety. So that is telling us that even the dirt, the ground, the soil, however you want to call it, around the castle itself is very powerful. Uh, many people that don't know um, that the castle itself uh, has been blessed by the Orthodox priest because the truth what is uh, Dracul family has been uh, follower of the uh, orthodoxy for, you know, since they basically existed. And they are the one that organized the order of a dragon, what it means, uh, uh, Dracula. So uh, not to go into Dracula meaning vampire, and vampire on the Latin or vampirism means the one who is taking the blood from another, uh, uh, another living creature. You know, uh, portals that do exist around the castles are really common. As some people did see, uh, uh, just like in the movies, they would see the carriages coming in and out. Uh, some people would hear uh, the beautiful voice of a girl singing and calling them to the other side. And that's when they get lost. Also, you must understand that during that time, many people did follow and practice um, ancient uh, uh, paganism, and they were deeply involved into 
uh, practice of uh, alchemy. So opening the doors of the other dimensions and coming and connecting to the other sides. And that's why, ladies and gentlemen, these doors to the other uh, uh, dimensions are open around uh, the castle. Um, some of you did ask me, did I ever see Count in my dreams? Yes, I did. Uh, I saw him before we got confirmation with DNA. I saw him more than a couple times when I was in trouble. He came to help me out. And, and, and me and him have one agreement uh, that I do everything to wash his name away from everything that, uh, you know, Irish, uh, basically drunken alcoholic person wrote, uh, you know, from imagination up to the nonsense that is far away from his uh, royalty blood and from everything that he did for Christianity uh, at that time, because we were fighting Ottoman's empire at that time. Uh, another thing that you guys uh, did ask me about what I really did love uh, is uh, basically how does it feel to be connected with such an amazing, beautiful uh, person that is, you know, running through the history and time and, uh, you know, his legacy is still alive. It's amazing. I'm proud of it. And uh, I am proud uh, to call myself his great, great niece and I'm proud that I will be uh, part of the history, you know, and part of history being changed and recorrected. Because many times, ladies and gentlemen, I'm sure you know about that, history has been uh, written and told in many different ways, giving us totally different explanation and the lies. And when the surface is not even touched, we actually find out that everything we have told is life, just like many other stories. But going back to darkness and to Halloween, or going back to the veil telling, let's go into Bermuda Triangle. Many of you did ask me about Bermuda Triangle and go like, what's happening there? Well, Bermuda Triangle, you know, is something where the portals are open, where the ley lines are different. And of course, especially during the Halloween times, the dimension, it's like a magnet collecting all the creatures flying and coming around it. Some people are saying that this place is actually an ancient way in the portal that is connected to the UFO, to extraterrestrials, to dragons, and other creatures that do follow us, you know, from the fairy tales and the legends. I personally believe that this is a huge portal. And of course, when the veil is very, uh, uh, you know, uh, thin, especially during the Halloween times, of course, we will be capable of seeing more activities around the uh, uh, Bermuda Triangle. Another thing that many of you did ask me is, what can I do for Halloween? Well, the most important thing I want you to have is the pumpkin. It doesn't have to be big and it doesn't even have to be carved as long as you have it in front of your door so that you are respecting the dead souls. Another thing, it's the candle. Many of you go like, oh, does it have to be candle in color? Do I have to spend a lot of money? No, you can go to dollar store. It can be a simple tea light candle, or you can go crazy just like me and decorate the entire house and put candles around. And just as the whale is thinning, allow this beautiful energy to take over your soul. See, many people don't know, but actually the whale thinning is not that dangerous and it's not that scary. It's also the time when you can connect to the other side. So as you do meditation, as you do soul searching, as you also do scrying, if you know how, that's with a, uh, basically with a mirror and a candle, or even bigger thing that many people like to doing is honoring the dead. So you give the offerings. Uh, you can also, you know, light the candle. And this is also a wonderful time to remove the negative energy from your home because the veil is staining. So you're capable of removing everything heavy and, uh, you know, dark on your soul because you're allowing this to be taken away as the clock changes. Just like a shaman, one seasoning ending, the new one is beginning. And we are also approaching the time of our winter. 
this is the time when everything is calmer, ladies and gentlemen, when we need to relax, when we need to connect the to our soul and do some soul searching, you know, gather with your family and with your friends. And the most important, gather with your cup of tea or cup of coffee and do some soul searching. As you do this, you know, you can sit beside the fireplace, you can sit on your favorite spot, um, anywhere that you like. You can be even outside in the nature. And as you do this, please open your palms and just ask nature to receive, you know, everything that is negative away from you and give you the beginning of calmness and away basically from the darkness that you are protected from the darkness and coldness that is coming with the winter season. So as the wheel is changing, you will go with the wheel. And then as the spring comes, we will again enter the new light time. That is what the shaman is all about. It's also telling us about, you know, end of the harvest. So it doesn't mean that you have to be on a field and harvest the corn and the wheat, but be thankful for whatever you have. So, for example, be thankful for that cup of coffee, for, you know, maybe getting rid of the illness or, you know, some of the loved one, uh, you know, uh, getting rid of uh, uh, something horrible, resolving that debt or, you know, finding your soul or, you know, just being grateful for sitting around everybody that you love. I personally am very thankful that I have such a wonderful friends and family that I'm placed on this path and that I have so many people that love and admire me as, as much as I love and admire them. Your energy and your beautiful souls feed my soul. And that's what gives me energy and the power to go to a next, uh, uh, next circle, or I should say, a next winter season. You know, uh, also another thing that people don't know but this is also a very good time to do the reading. So it's a good time if you guys want to have tarot card reading, poem reading, uh, tassiography, what means reading of the tea, reading of, uh, uh, you know, cup of coffee, because the veil is staying. And at this time, as you're opening these uh, cards, as you're reading this coffee and puring your hearts and soul into it, all the universe is connecting to it and giving you the keys. I always said tarot cards are nothing else but a compass, but it's up to you how you're going to take it, ladies and gentlemen. It's also up to you how you're going to accept this guidance. With some people, it's really hard. It doesn't matter how much you want to try to give them the directions and you give them the strength and support. They may ignore it. I advise you you try once, you try twice, you try the third time. After that, let it go. Because it's not also worth it to drain all of your energy and to drain yourself and make other ones around you suffer while this person is choosing this path. Once when they fall and they experience what they shouldn't because you're giving them direction, they will probably ask for your help or knock at the door. And that's when you continue, you know, extending your hand, give them the advice and just say, I'm glad that you are waking up. This is also a time of enlightenment. Many people don't know, but, uh, you know, we are in the time of the enlightenment when we are connecting to other souls, to other creatures, to other beings. This is a time when dimensions are open. So if you guys want to do, you know, some people like to do ghost huntings, I wouldn't advise you to do it on this day go far away from those hollywood stories and uh, you know playing with the souls and giving this respect for the ones that left us because this time they're much stronger they're more powerful and they will not allow you to play with them because as the whale is standing and you are calling upon them, you're asking them to come or, you know, you're trying to provoke them or whatever, they may be also be angry because this is the only time in the year when they should be, you know, uh, respected. I don't mean like you should disrespect your dead anyways, but I'm saying this is a very special time because it is, you know, a day of the dead. Um, in Latin America, it's very also common, you know, people go and dress up 
And the reason why, because they also say that their souls won't recognize them. They also give candies and the sweets. They give alcohol, they give tobacco uh, to protect their, you know, uh, living souls against the dead souls being taken to the other side. In Croatia, in Dubrovnik, they have something that is called mask and ball. And all of the ladies and the gentlemen, especially the middle age, they got dressed up um, just like you guys see with the big hats. And, uh, you know, the hairs are done. They have shiny things on their hands or on their foreheads to reflect the death. And always they carry something red. What is presenting the blood and darkness? What is presenting the passing of away? Um, they go down the street. They dance. They have fun. Uh, they laugh. They joke. But in a respectful way uh, to the dead and not in disrespectful way. And Dubrovnik in Croatia is pretty uh, good if you're interested in that. Italy is uh, very common too. And I do also have uh, that uh, blood inside of me. I'm mixed of all different kind of uh, uh, European bloods uh, that run, uh, run through my body. But, you know, if you go in uh, Isla de la Munecasa in Mexico, it's quite amazing. This place is protected by UNESCO. What it means, you know, it's protected by the world. You can see Aztecs' lives in it. The neighboring of Hochimal Kolk families, uh, you know, they left many different kind of dolls. And we can say hundreds of them. It's quite amazing if you go and see it. Uh, and... Uh, we can also say that man by name Julian Santa Barbera lived there after the finding a dead girl in nearby canal. He thought the dolls will capture the evil spirits. Once they can, uh, you know, uh, call themselves on, uh, they will be capable of seeing all these dolls around it. And as you see, they're saying that these dolls are capturing the uh, evil souls. And actually, it's quite, if you talk about kachinas, if we talk about voodoo dolls, if we talk about vlasi dolls that I was telling you about Transylvania's gypsies, they always use the dolls to capture the evil spirits or to bring the evil spirits upon somebody. So this is very common to be seen in the, uh, Latin America and Mexico, especially with Maya and Incas and Aztecs. But if we go even to some of the other places like Singapore, when you enter the park in Singapore, uh, it's called uh, Par Villa, is actually made with over 11,000 statues, ladies and gentlemen. Imagine 11,000 statues all around you. And uh, these are underworld themed statues uh, and uh, some of them are actually talking about entrance of the hell, showing the punishments, teaching young children about mortality. So in Singapore, uh, i never been there, but it's on my list to go. Uh, they do have uh, this amazing place that is talking about the underworld, and every statue is talking about the underworld life, about punishments, about... Uh, you know, how the souls goes to transition and etc. It's also teaching us about mortality. So again, going from one place to another, because what is the soul, ladies and gentlemen? Soul, it is the energy, and soul cannot be destroyed nor created because it is the energy, and it goes over the time and over the distance. As you vibrate, you may connect to the other souls. Even at this moment, you guys are not here accidentally. You are here because your souls are connected to my souls and the souls in the chat and the viewers and etc. We're all vibrating at the same time and we are connecting over the time and the distance. How beautiful that is, especially on this special uh, shaman, or we can say the thinning of the veil or the Halloween. Uh, there's some reports that these statues in the Singapore, uh, you know, uh, do have condemned souls that come to the life at night, especially during the Halloween. And uh, you can hear the screams, you can hear, you know, somebody begging for forgiveness. And, uh, and there's some of those horrible sounds that, you know, many of the researchers did uh, basically talk about. And they did 
talk about that National Geography, Discovery Channel, and many different uh, programs. Is it possible that our ancestors did have a key to a different dimensions, that they did use the statues, monuments, to connect to the other worlds? Because if we talk about the Stonehenge, what is it but a, basically a portal to another world? Many of you that talk about Maryland, and tonight let's not forget about the Maryland, you know, one and only a beautiful visitor that is coming from the England. One and only that it's, you know, still being alive, kept in many stories, including Disneyland, to entertain our children and even ourselves. But Merlin is the alchemist. He was a little bit strange, older gentleman who was going down the woods, calling upon the powers above and under. He was capable to connect to the dead souls. He was capable of moving one, you know, uh, uh, one object from one place to another. He was really powerful that he ended up being, uh, at the end, uh, you know, other royal courts. Uh, he was capable of being there with the most powerful and strong, telling them about the battleships, what to do and how, and his story never died. There is a story also that he transferred the Stonehenge from one part of the, uh, basically, uh, country to another. And that ancient Druids, actually, during the Halloween time, would give the offerings to the gods above, uh, and that basically that was usually done during the Shaman time. Uh, this is quite interesting because they did find the skulls, they did find the bones around that area. And like I'm, I'm talking about the human remains. They did find one stone that it's 99% looking like a sacrificing altar. Again, all of this is laying on a different ley lines. It has a different energy, the power. And of course, and it's connected to the wheel of Shaman. And it's connected to 21st of the March and 21st of December. And you can see the sun clearly connecting there to the stone, going just like a natural calendar. Many people that went there, they said they felt the energy and they felt, uh, uh, you know, power as they were there. Even healing did happen. So again, we are talking about the powers of unknown. We are talking about the powers that are happening at Halloween night. One thing that I would like you to think about Halloween is actually to also think about what you accomplished, what you accomplished this year, because that is your harvest. Think about something, at least one positive thing that you did this year and say thank you. If the sky is rainy, if the sky is very, you know, uh, basically cold, and you cannot step outside or your health is, you know, not allowing you, just look through the window and say thank you and allow that happiness to go through you and negativity to go away. So as this, you know, calm season comes, as the winter comes, that you are protected and that negative energy is removed from you. If you are like me, I usually go outside and after the midnight, I open my palms, I look at the sky, and I say thank you for everything. I even say thank you for the experiences that were not pleasant because they wouldn't make me who I am today. And that's very important to always remember who you are and what you're standing for. You know, um, Shemaine is also a very sweet time to spend time with your children. Get them just stop getting be happy and involved. This is the first time, you know, that my uh, son will be involved in Halloween. I, I, I think we're going to go with a little bit different theme for him so he can feel comfortable, but still he can enjoy the power of the Halloween and power of that beautiful night that happens once a year. Um, another thing that I want you ladies and gentlemen to think about is that season is changing. So we were in the spring and in the summer and in the fall, and fall is kind of time preparing us for the, forgive me, for the winter. And winter is the time when everything is kind of colder, when everything is, uh, you know, going to sleep. And that's what Shaman is all about. They want you to prepare your soul for rest, for calmness, 
for this darkness and coldness around us. So as the wheel turns and you remove that negative energy and you come to positive energy, you will be capable of coming that cocoon and open your wings as a beautiful butterfly. So that's what I'm telling you. Let go of all negativity. Think about at least one positive thing that happened before, you know, night of Shemaine or before of the Halloween and connect to the universe and the veil thinning, connect to the source. Another thing, like you get the, that reading if you would like to. And the most important thing, don't play with Jack the Lantern because you never know what can happen, just like happened to one of my neighbors, because you don't play with powers above and under. One thing that some people don't know, and that is that Halloween is so powerful that it can take over your mind and over your souls. There is people that play with a Ouija board during this time, and I really don't advise you, because during this time, as you're calling the dead souls that are going to come to the Ouija board, 99% are not going to be the dead loved ones that you're expecting. They're not going to be the grandma and grandpa that maybe you're calling for advice. It's usually a dark spirit or a dark entity that you will have a trouble getting rid of. Ouija boards are usually used by specialists, by demonologists, and I don't advise you uh, to use them yourself and play with them, especially if you have young children, because this is where all the Hollywood is coming from. Let's all play with the Ouija board, and at the end, what's going to happen? We're going to end up in that movie, and, you know, at the end. Actually, it's going to be horrible, it's going to be terrifying, and I don't advise you, especially as the veil is thinning, to play with this very powerful tool. Uh, one thing, you know, many of you uh, do ask, uh, and I love when all these questions are coming by, it's, uh, you know, is there a special cake? You should at least have something sweet. So anything from a simple candy up to cake that you want to make. Uh, in my house, we usually have a special shaman cake that it's made with apples and that is shared with my uh, loved ones. And we also have a, a special tea that it has oranges, lemon, apple peel, and cinnamon, and it's cooked nicely and then shared with the loved ones together uh, with the cake. But again, this is because it's coming from my culture, my tradition and uh, where I'm coming from. But there's nothing wrong as long as you're being respectful to. Um, and what is also very important that many people don't understand, and that is that during this time, creatures will come. So I want to warn you, you may see ghosts, you may see spirits, you may see many different kind of creatures, and you will say, oh, is that mine playing the trick on me? Is that something happening, you know, uh, to the other side? Did I see really well? Maybe I'm not okay. It's very common. You'll be capable of seeing many different creatures and many different things because as the veil is standing. Don't be scared. But also, if you don't feel comfortable, just say, go to the light and continue praying, whatever faith and whatever uh, prayer works for you. You know, this is quite, like I'm saying, amazing uh, time for me because it's a time when uh, in my house we have decorative uh, uh, objects all around. It's a time when we honor our debt and our uh, loved ones that did pass away. We remember our ancestors, we remember who we are and we try to follow uh, them and respect them because their blood runs inside of us. And sooner or later, we'll all meet uh, with one another. Another thing, if you would like to call upon the dead loved one during this uh, time, I would then advise you to light a white right candle and just uh, meditate and ask them to come into your dreams and, you know, to uh, come and connect with your souls and uh, give you the answers that uh, you are looking for. Um, Shemaine is something that 
I would always cherish that I will continue uh, celebrating and I will uh, teach uh, my, uh, you know, uh, children uh, how basically to enjoy this uh, beautiful, um, uh, basically, celebration and tradition, to know the meaning of it. And that's what is the most important uh, episode of Diva's Dimension this evening. I want you guys to know the meaning of Shemaine. I want you to know the meaning of Halloween. I want you to know that not everything is connected to those dark, heavy stories that we see on Hollywood where they're playing with the souls and they're playing with, uh, you know, uh, 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 loved ones that pass away, making up the stories and making fun of them. You know, think about your loved ones at this moment. Light the candle for them. Say hello. Don't be don't be shy and don't be scared. Uh, you know, teach your children the proper way, uh, because I am teaching my son what is the real way uh, of carving the pumpkin, what is the meaning of dressing up, what is the meaning of uh, giving the offering, and what is the meaning of respecting your own culture, tradition, respecting the, the, the debt, and uh, respecting the soul of the ones that pass away. One day we will all pass away. We don't live forever. But in one way we do, because our soul goes from one you know, dimension to another, and that's where we meet again. And just imagine, how would you feel if you met Aunt Lucy? And she goes like, well... Didn't you make fun of me during and this this day? It doesn't mean you need to be serious and you cannot enjoy and laugh and because laughter is the best medicine for the soul, but show respect. And that's what is most important. Prepare yourself for the winter. And remember, even at the front door, you know, you can then leave it in a backyard. If you're living in an apartment, you can leave it on the balcony, on the window. Leave one apple, couple candies, just overnight when you're done with trick and treating and say, this is for you. And I want to say thank you. Open your souls to the universe. Be one because we the universe, because we are all one. So that is my message for you this evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you have fun. During the Shemaine time, during the Halloween, the Day of the Dead, will we celebrate the souls and respect the souls of the loved ones. And don't forget that one day we will all go from one dimension to another. This was a special edition of Diva's Dimension. I love you all. Happy Halloween. Happy Shemaine. May all you be blessed and happy as we go through one season to another. Bye-bye.